Okay, folks. Um, hello, you're all very welcome uh, to this special meeting uh, this afternoon, and I'm going to pass it over now to John for the attendance and apologies. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, members. To all members of Derry City and Strabane District Council, you're hereby summoned to attend a special meeting of the Council to be held today in the Council Chamber, Guildhall, um, Monday the 25th of March, at just after 2 o'clock. Alderman Cook? Here. Alderman Guy? Here. Alderman Hussey? Apologies. Alderman Carrigan? Alderman McMorris? Apologies. Alderman Middleton? Apologies. Alderman Montgomery? Apologies. Alderman Wilkinson? Apologies. Councillor Jason Barr? Councillor Lillian? Councillor Lillian Barr? Councillor Raymond Barr? Here. Councillor Boggs? In charge on. Councillor Boyle? Here. Councillor Clark? Apologies for Councillor Clark. Councillor Cusick? Councillor Dini? Apologies. Councillor Devine? Apologies. Councillor Donnelly? Councillor Alex Duffy? Councillor Sandra Duffy? Sure. Councillor Farrell? Apologies. Councillor Fleming? Sure. Councillor Gallagher? Apologies from Councillor Harkin. Councillor Hart? And sure. Councillor Heaney? Sure. Councillor Hutton? And sure, John. Councillor Jackson? Sure. Councillor Leonard? And sure. Councillor Logue? Sure. Councillor McDade? Apologies. Councillor McGinley? Sure. Councillor McHugh? Councillor Mooney? Apologies. Thank you. Councillor Murphy? Sure. Councillor Norris? Apologies. Councillor O'Farrell? Sure, John. Councillor Riley? Councillor Tierney? And Councillor Anilis. Thank you, members. I'm just going to uh, now read the broadcasting statement. I would like to remind everyone present that, that at this meeting we will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. This broadcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with our protocol. If you are seated in the lower public seating, media areas, it is possible that your recording cameras will capture your image, and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of that broadcast. By entering the council chamber and using the press or lower public seating areas, you are consenting to being filmed and consenting to the use and storage of those images for broadcasting or training purposes and for the purposes of keeping historical records and making those records available to the public. If you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery. A copy of the Council's privacy notice may be found on the Council's website, www.derrystraban.com. Can I ask now, is there any uh, declarations of members' interests? No. Um, can I just uh, welcome uh, to the Chamber here uh, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Paul Bartholomew, uh, Vice Chancellor, Neil Guckin, Chief Executive of the Western Trust, Liam Miguel McGuire, Pro Vice Chancellor and Research, mm -hmm. Professor Victor Galt, Associate Dean, Research and Innovation, Emer McCauley, Executive Director of Finance, Contracts and Capital Development, Professor Arne Peace, Consultant, Cardiologist, Citric, Chief Executive, Dr. Frank McCarl, Consultant Neurologist, Associate Sub Dean Medical and Dental Education, Keith Hegarty, Acting Assistant Director, Capital Development, Development, and Wendy McLaughlin, Project Lead of Capital Development. You're all very welcome to the Chamber here this afternoon, and you'll note that some of uh, those I've named are sitting seated in the gallery. So thank you all very much. So, John. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, members, I'm going <clears> to <throat> pass over to Eamon in just a moment, but members, you'll be aware this is our fourth um, 
special council city deal meeting, um, fourth and last, in terms of um, receiving information on the project or program OBCs that comprise um, the city deal and inclusive future fund um, suite of projects. As the mayor has already said, we're delighted um, to be joined today uh, by senior colleagues from both the Western Health and Social Care Trust and Ulster University, with whom our internal team has been working extremely closely uh, over the last uh, number of years, and in particular the last number of months, with regard to the totality of the City Deal projects. Um, so today, today's focus is on um, the School of Medicine and the Personalised Medicine Centre uh, of Innovation Excellence, which will be, uh, as we will hear shortly, co-located both in the McGee campus and also in the Alna Galvin uh, campus of the Western Health and Social Care Trust. So um, the purpose of the meeting, members, is to disseminate information and progress and also to seek um, your endorsement, as previously, on the direction of travel and the subsequent um, submission of the OBCs. And obviously our colleagues um, from both Ulster and Western Health um, will take us through the detail um, of uh, those projects and the emerging OBCs. So, um, Mary, I'll pass to Eamon just to um, summarise the remainder of the report, and then we we'll pass to colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, John. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, as John has said, uh, the School of Medicine and the uh, Personalised Medicine Centre has a combined uh, value in excess of £50 million. Pounds, and as you all be aware, it is proposed that there will be a new building, a new medical school building um, on site directly adjacent to the council offices in Strand Road, plus um, a new build and enhancements of buildings on the campus of the Alton Galvin site. Um, by way of the uh, detailed report that was presented to members on the 4th of March, you will be aware um, that the development of the OBCs has been a lengthy process and um, one that has been considerably challenged um, by inflation and construction inflation as we've moved through this process. Um, this has required detailed reappraisals of all of our projects um, and those that have been presented to date and indeed this project is no different um, and we thank our colleagues for working very closely with us to ensure that we have affordable options that still deliver um, what we set out to do and um, will still deliver the outcomes. So the School of Medicine and Personalised Medicine Centre has been designed to enhance the ability uh, to provide integrated teaching and research here in, in the city and facilities at Ulster and McGee and also at the, the hospital. The programme business case um, for phase two is being developed in partnership between the University and the Western Health and Social Care Trust um, and uh, also our colleagues in CTRIC. The proposal um, for which capital uh, development is being sought relates to infrastructure provision. So this is primarily about the actual physical buildings and fitting those buildings out so that the teaching and the research can be done hand in hand. And the proposal comes in three main components, uh, teaching and research accommodation, um, which will be at the university campus at McGee. And again, that's a new build um, and it will host the annual cohort, as we have now, of medical students. They're already there, as I'm sure everybody uh, in, in chamber knows. Um, and also it will uh, provide a teaching laboratory space and equipment for the personalised medicine programme. There will be a medical teaching um, at the facility at Alton Galvin Hospital. And again, this is about enhancing and expanding um, space uh, that is needed there in order to uh, continue the teaching um, at the hospital. And it will basically respond to teaching and research needs. And it will provide, uh, will provide two new lecture theatres, two clinical skills rooms, three tutorial rooms, one stimulation room and a virtual reality room. The Personalised Medical Centre will comprise a, a new build extension for the existing Clinical Translational Research Centre, CTRIC, and that facility, as everyone is aware, is already there at Alton Galvin. And the aim of this um, part of the project is to enable the delivery of increased medical and clinical trials and research opportunities to support research development and innovation. And uh, this will be achieved by promoting research and community-based research and creating a uh, centre of research excellence here in the city. 
Member, the uh, key uh, next steps and the implications um, for this um, have been outlined previously um, to you. Um, the lead partners, uh, Ulster uh, and the Western Health and Social Care Trust, uh, to date have provided all funding and resources required for the development of the project and the OBCs to date, um, for which they have lead responsibility. Um, and uh, as we outlined in the uh, report to the meeting of the 4th of March, all matters currently known have been reported and there no further matters have arisen since uh, the um, since the uh, presentation to Council on the 4th of March. So um, on that, members, I'm going to hand over to um, uh, Victor Galt, um, who will take us through the School of Medicine, the first part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Eamon. I'm just going to start the presentation. Okay, so I'm very happy to be here to present on behalf of Ulster University in terms of the School of Medicine Phase 2 development, the programme outline business case. And we have developed this in partnership with our colleagues at the Western Health and Social Care Trust and our colleagues at uh, CTRIC. Next, please. Next slide, please. So, for some context, uh, back in October 2019, there was an OBC submitted for a graduate entry medical school to the Department of Health. And back in May 2020, uh, the Deputy First Minister at that time announced proposals for a medical school. And this was obviously proposed or approved by the executive for the first intake of 70 students in September 2021. To progress that phase one development, an OBC was submitted to the Department of Health in August 2021. And at that time, we commenced our School of Medicine uh, in temporary accommodation. But part of that OBC identified the need for new purpose-built accommodation as being the longer-term solution. And this was to be addressed through a subsequent OBC. It's important to say that the School of Medicine at Ulster has passed all stages of GMC accreditation to date and is now strongly rooted here in the Northwest. So that with the Minister's uh, decision back in 2020, the need for a school of medicine here in the northwest is not in question next slide please at the same time that there was an obc put together for uh, the school of medicine there was also an soc developed for a project known as thrive and, and that was really developed around 2018 or 2019 in the absence of any indication of approval for the school of medicine and at that time that thrive project was really more to do with research and innovation and at that OBC, the preferred way forward was actually a twin track approach, whereby there would be enhancement or expansion of the facility at CTRIC, up at Dalton Gelman Hospital, and also the inclusion of what was termed there a health research institute. And really that is the research and innovation wing of what would be the School of Medicine at Ulster. And the OBC, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the, the OBC one at that time, for the School of Medicine, factored in the research ambition that the university had for the new School of Medicine. And it was articulated in the Thrive's uh, SOC, with research excellence being one of the spending objectives noted at that time. And it's widely recognised across the UK, nationally, internationally, the importance of research in terms of medical schools. They form a real core part of medical schools, not only to attract students, but also to attract talented staff to perform research as well. And this has supported evidence nationally and internationally. And back in 21-22, Ulster University took the, the, the strategic decision that they would integrate what was known or what is known as our personalized medicine capability or staff, who were once in the School of Biomedical Sciences. They're now been integrated into the School of Medicine as a research component. 
and obviously that is in key partnership with our colleagues in the Western Health and Social Care Trust. So the decision was taken at that point that we would consolidate the two projects, the School of Medicine and the CTRIC stroke, which would have been uh, HRI component, two projects to really maximise the benefits and the synergies across rather than trying to do them separately, but to try and consolidate and maximise those synergies and benefits. Next slide, please. So in terms of the School of Medicine at Ulster University, our vision is very clear. We want to be a nationally and internationally excellent medical school where we're able to recruit and retain high quality staff and students. We want our graduates, whenever they come out, that they're able to deliver whole person care with skill and compassion and be members and leaders of diverse teams and obviously working in partnership with clients and with patients. We want our graduates, whenever they come out, they have a vision that is community focused, but yet globally ambitious and academically capable agents of change. And finally, we want to be able, we want, we have a vision that we will inspire and work in partnership with our community here in the Northwest through high quality, ambitious research, innovation and education. And that encompasses both our education, our research and innovation endeavors. Next slide, please. So it's important just to highlight for yourselves the Ulster University School of Medicine Research and Innovation. This was this was something that we have worked very hard on over the last few years. You maybe can't see the you maybe can't see that slide so well or, or the diagram, but let me take you through it very very quickly. So within the School of Medicine, we have now set up our research vision for the future, and it really spans along three key research clusters. One of them is around translational experimental research. And that is the discovery science that, that we do, which will lead potentially to a new treatment or a new diagnostic. And that work is largely will be largely conducted within the facility at CTRIC. In fact, our personalised medicine staff currently do that up in CTRIC. The second key arm then, over the last few years, we have appointed some professors in clinical medicine, and they will be looking at the research cluster around clinical medicine. That's to take those discoveries or those, those potential treatments into the next stage where they can test them in patients and see if they're effective. And then the final stage is around public and population health. So what does it mean? When you give someone a potential drug or you have a, or you have a potential diagnostic, you need to follow to see what effect it has on the public or the population. So those are the three key clusters that we have developed in partnership with our colleagues at the Trust. And you'll see there that there are a number of areas that we're very keen on, for example, personalised medicine and genomics, things around rare diseases or diabetes or cardiometabolic diseases. So those are the areas that those streams will span. And they align very closely with the, with the work that is done at, at Western Health and Social Care Trust at CTRIC and also ourselves. And then just at the bottom there, you will see we've been very, we've been very clear on how we will support this through our infrastructure. And we have three key components currently of research infrastructure to support our research ambitions. One of them is our personalised medicine centre that has been established now for many years, uh, started primarily in, in CTRIC and continue to be there. Another one, we have an all-island paediatric cardiology network that is headed up by a, an eminent professor here at the university, uh, and that seeks to look at the cardiology among children and, and newborns. And then the final piece for the public and, and population health is around our uh, area that we have in the Northern Ireland Public Health Research Network. So those are the three underpinning research networks. So we have a very ambitious research and innovation uh, vision for the School of Medicine here at Ulster. And you'll see there that we want to inspire and integrate our local community and our clinical partners through high quality, ambitious research and innovation. So we want to involve our community and you'll hear more about that from Professor Peace later on. We need to conduct research that is not just locally relevant, but delivers global impact, which will make a real change across the world, ultimately benefiting health across the island of Ireland through interdisciplinary collaborations. That's really important. While seeking to address known health inequalities that exist. And we want to become a research environment that promotes, promotes research excellence with integrity, with transparency, with respect and inclusivity. And that's very important in terms of the research that we do. Next slide, please. So in terms of the research and innovation, I wanted to put in this slide just, just because it summarizes very nicely what we're trying to do in partnership with our colleagues in the Trust. And you'll see there on, on the right hand side, we've taken this from uh, our institutional uh, people, place and partnership strategy that has recently been developed. And underpinning that there as are aligning with that is our own research 
strategy that has just been developed over the last number of years and integrated in there is the Western, Western Health and Social Care Trust research strategy. And so you'll see very clearly here we have, in terms of the pillars, we have the School of Medicine that I've just outlined. We have the Western Health and Social Care research uh, interests there that align with our own and advance in medical research. And then Professor Peace will talk a wee bit more around the work at CTRIC and importantly our, our links in with industry. But across this integration, in terms of what we have here, this will really enhance the research, development and innovation across the Northwest and further afield. Next slide, please. So in terms of the proposal itself, in terms of the programme proposal, there are three key elements. The first element is really teaching and research accommodation at Ulster's Derry, London Derry campus. And the promoter, the project promoter for this will be Ulster University, and I'll talk a wee bit more about that shortly. The second uh, piece of the proposal will be teaching accommodation at our Elton Gelvin Hospital. Again, the trust will be the promoter there. And then Clinical Translational Research and Innovation Centre, or CTRIC at Elton Gelvin. Two key components there, extension and an enhancement of the facilities and specialist equipment to help support that research and development and innovation piece. And I will take you through now uh, the teaching and research accommodation at Ulster University. Next slide, please. So in terms of the of the strategic alignment and, and the policies, we have been very careful and, and worked hard to look at the national, the regional, and the local and the institutional policies and strategies. And you'll see many of them there are listed from UK government industrial strategy across to best research for best health, life sciences strategy nationally. Some examples of regional and local are obviously the draft program for government and the NDNA. And then, of course, Derry City and Strabane District Council, the, the strategic uh, growth plans that, that are here, and institutionally, our own university, and also the Western Health and Social Care Trust. The key drivers for change that helped us, uh, helped inform the options that we now have, have, have arrived at, were really informed by principally the new decade, new approach, the programme for government, the economy minister's vision for the economy, and particularly around regional balance, and of course, our own scenario assessments of the future medical school places that will be required moving forward for the future anticipated need that is going to be required uh, moving forward. Next slide, please. So I wanted to outline just the overarching spending objectives uh, uh, here, and th there are four. And we've broken these down into number one, new decade, new approach commitment. So really, that is to maximise the capacity of the site proposed for the School of Medicine that has just been outlined. Uh, and as a part of that, really to realise, as part contribution to realising uh, the 10,000 student campus target is important there. And I'll highlight this because I'll mention it for, for later on in the options that the capacity is obviously subject to affordability considerations or the funding that will be available. So that's the first spending objective. The second spending objective is around building teaching and research infrastructural capacity. So that's to deliver both teaching and research accommodation for the School of Medicine, fit for purpose, uh, and with the capacity to meet current and projected needs, future needs on campus, both here at Derry London Derry uh, University campus and at Alton Gelvin Hospital site. Placemaking, very important, to contribute in partnership with the Council towards a wider regeneration and placemaking of the Derry, London Derry, Strand Road waterfront area. And that's a big part for us to make sure that we play our part as a university and integrate in that. And finally, to enable economic growth. So to enhance and adapt and expand the medical research capacity and capability in the Northwest to meet healthcare challenges and industry and wider community needs across the medical, health and life sciences wider sector. So those are the four over overarching spending objectives within the program business case, new new decade, new approach commitment, building that necessary infrastructural capacity for both teaching and research, placemaking and enabling economic growth. Next slide, please. So in terms of the options, this, these are the options for the School of Medicine building that would, uh, has been proposed for the, the Strand Road site. So in consideration of the options, in terms of uh, continuing our current business as usual, if we, if we do the if we take away the do nothing, we have three do something options that are that we have managed to shortlist down. 
The first option, we've called it option two, because that's, that's how we progress it in the business case, uh, is option two. And here, we, here the proposal would be a new building of approximately 4,600 square metres floor space. And that would accommodate an annual cohort of 80 medical students, essentially the medical students that we currently recruit to the university, and also would provide us with, with, with some new research space. Now, this particular option is the preferred option from an affordability and funding perspective in terms of what uh, what is achievable within the current funding envelope that is available. <clears throat> so therefore, what has been identified currently through the Inclusive Futures Fund and with significant contribution from the Ulster University itself. It's important to state that there's no, also no additional resource cost required for this particular uh, in, in terms of over the status quo, as there is no uplift in student numbers. And as, as I suppose I should have said at the outset, this particular proposal or programme business case for building is about capital. It's not about resource at this point. But given the constraints of the, of the proposed site, this option does not allow for the future expansion of the medical school should a need for an increase in medical school places to be confirmed by Department of Health at a future date. So, so, so that's option number two, the preferred option from an affordability or funding perspective. But we want to be more ambitious where possible if we can. So next slide, please. So option three is where we would have a new building of approximately eight and a half thousand square metres. And that's important because that is a building, uh, that is a scale of building that has previously had planning permission on the proposed site. And here we would be able to accommodate an annual cohort of 80 medical students as an option two, new research space as per option two, but with some additional space of around 3,900 square metres. So that would give us capacity to accommodate an increase in student numbers subject to additional funding for additional student places being secured. And this would be a pr the preferred option in terms of minimising the planning risk, given the previous planning permission that is granted on that particular site. Next slide, please. So the fourth option is uh, an option that would allow a new building of approximately 10,300 square metres floor space. And that would allow there to be complete maximisation of the potential capacity of the proposed site. And this would accommodate, again, the annual cohort of medical students as an option two. New research space is identified in option two, but here we would have additional space of around 5,700 square metres compared to option two. So this would have capacity to accommodate an even greater increase in student numbers. They could be medical if required or non-medical students compared to option three, but again, on the basis that uh, there would be additional funding uh, be, that would be made available for uh, resource or for, or for students. This we, this we have uh, described as a preferred option from a Northern Ireland future health service need perspective in terms of meeting the identified need associated with the key drivers for change. It also maximises the contribution that the new build under this option could make to additional student numbers in Derry, London Derry. And I should say that this is the option that we have fully worked up at this part in our proposal. Next slide, please. So in terms of, in terms of delivery, uh, this is just to assure folks here that we will uh, undertake all best practice governance arrangements uh, as we have done in previous uh, deals, including robust risk management and assurance framework, assurance framework will be a, that will be adopted. And again, we have the programme of works will include various cost and commercial managers and integrated consultant teams. And there is enabling works that is built into our options to allow some preliminary work that could be able to commence subject to, to agreement and approval. And of course, our own governance issue, our own governance where our projects are currently going through internal governance process ongoing. So, so in summary, from this point, I have identified or outlined three options, do something options, option two, uh, which would be a preferred option from a, an affordability point of view. Option three, uh, that would be, I suppose, an intermediate option that would be not risk the uh, planning and option four uh, that would maximise the site. But both options two and three come, or options three and four come with a funding deficit from what is currently there in the in the funding envelope from the Inclusive Futures Fund.
Thank you. Madam Mayor, can I just go ahead? Yep. Madam Mayor, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to present the Western Trust uh, plans under the city, city deal. And uh, I'm going to start off with the benefits to the population. And for starting uh, about medical research and clinical research, it's not as high profile as the health and social care services. So I want to, do you want to identify some of the benefits associated with, with, with research? Clinical research will change the way health and social care services and health and well-being is managed into the future. The opportunities at this time uh, for improvement in our interventions and medications are endless, and it is an extremely exciting time to be involved in, in research. It can also help to improve the population's ownership of lifestyle and health and well-being choices as they get more involved in the research program. Uh, ultimately, why is it needed? And you will hear from Aaron uh, shortly that the Citric site in Elton and Gavin uh, Hospital uh, is already at maximum capacity. We cannot accept any more research, so we're ready to expand, and we're we're there, and we're 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 ready to roll. Uh, it also supports the economic development of the Northwest. Uh, quite frankly, getting getting access to clinical research in a hospital such as Alton Galvin, which is clearly the number two hospital in Northern Ireland, but when you look at the specialty spread, and has also given the fact that health and social care are integrated in Northern Ireland as a great uh, source for worldwide research. Other benefits that we will have. Research and clinical research at the highest levels will help us to attract and retain the best clinical staff across the world. Turning to education, I'm extremely proud to say we have a fantastic reputation at the Gavin Hospital for medic medical education. We are among the top two to three percent in terms of feedback from from, from students. And I, I pay tribute to the people in Wet Ed West because they have not had the best facilities in the past decade to deliver that education from. And despite that, they're getting the, the top marks. So uh, really delivering a state-of-the-art facility, which City Deal will do, will actually further enhance that, that training and education for our, for our medical students. And this, again, will help us recruit and retain the best, st the best staff. Overall, the School of Medicine in McGee is a fundamental part of the long-term goals and aspirations of the Western Trust, and we see it, and we are fully behind it in all aspects. We, Western Trust, we do see our partnership with UU as being one of our most important partnerships going forward, and this goes way beyond the City, the city Deal project. The Graduate Entry Medical School is such a pivotal element of our future, and I want to commend our partners in UU for their perseverance, if nothing else, but also their support for this much needed development. And I will pass over to Emer now to give some of the introduction to the business cases. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Get your slides up, thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, Madam Mayor and members of council and partners, um, some of my more articulate colleagues have already covered on what I was intending to say today. So I won't, I'll try not to repeat any messages. Um, but we are delighted to be here to provide some more detail um, in relation to the trust-led elements of the City Deal Programme business case for innovation, digital and health projects. And these include, um, if we can move to the next slide, please. These include uh, the summarised projects uh, on the slide, which are an £11 million investment in research at Citric site and a £5 million investment in medical teaching accommodation at the Alton Galvin site in partnership with the Ulster University School of Medicine Capital Development at the Derry Lawton Derry campus. Uh, next slide, please. And the total investment, um, we've secured 45 million from the Inclusive Future Fund, um, which together with partner contributions brings it up to the over 50 million, which has been referred to by Eamon in his opening comments. And Neil has also already touched on the recognition that research forms a core part of the work of medical schools and also um, is strategically important um, in our partnership with the Ulster University. Next slide, please. Uh, the Trust has a governance uh, structure in place which aligns with the City Deal governance structure, so um, you should be very assured um, uh, with the illustration that's in front of you 
that um, the implementation of the business case will be conducted in line with the uh, really effective framework of governance, which is already in place within the trust. Next slide, please. And from an approval perspective, uh, the CITRIC board approved the CITRIC business case element on the 14th of March 2024, and the Western Trust Trust Board approved both business case elements for inclusion in the City Deal programme level business case on the 22nd of March 2024. So I will now pass to my colleague, Professor Aaron Peace, who is the Chief Executive of CITRIC Limited, who will talk you through the research project. And that will be followed by Dr. Frank McCarroll, who will talk through the teaching accommodation project. Thank you. Thank you, Emer. <clears throat> and it's a great privilege to have the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, if we could move to the next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. So look, I'm I'm just basically only going to take you through um, a few of these various different areas briefly. And uh, we'll touch on things uh, that have been touched on before. Um, next slide, please. So, I mean, it has been mentioned, you know, for and it's worthwhile everybody in the chamber realizing that Citrix is actually owned by the council, by Ulster University, and by the Western Health and Social Care Trust. So, we've been in this partnership for a very long period of time. So. I'd rather we get away from the narrative of speaking about all of these things in isolation and, and rather stick to the, the tripartite non-for-profit organisation that CITRIC actually is. So the aim of the project is to uh, provide a larger fit-for-purpose facility that's going to increase our research and development activities in CITRIC and ultimately become a world-renowned centre of excellence. And people have to have that ambition because of the fact that I've been lucky enough to work in places around the world where we have much smaller, from a much smaller demographic, and those places have achieved world-renowned um, research status. So we want an expanded R&D facility that will enable CITRIC to deliver more clinical trials, thereby presenting more research opportunities for patients and greater access to novel treatments and that are not otherwise available unless you're part of a research uh, study. So this in turn will improve the quality of healthcare provision for our community, will income generate to ensure the facility's long-term sustainability and attract new staff to a world-leading center of excellence. So, Research historically, is, is we know, is extremely important. Uh, we really want to make this a core activity of all disciplines across uh, the Trust and across our healthcare uh, institutions across Northern Ireland. And we, to do that, you know, we, we really need to have a very much a community-centred research model, because really the the participants are the raw material in all of this, and without them and their activity and their, their uh, uh, agreement and consent to participate in this, it, it really doesn't work. And that's why, you know, it's so important as the three partners and as a community and as a council that we champion this cause. So I've said that we want to be a centre of research excellence, and ultimately we want to achieve um, the privilege and prestige of becoming a university hospital uh, because that's what's going to attract people to come to us. So, I mean, the, the City Deal has gone on for a long period of time. Next slide. And the, um, but it's, it's hel helped us to sort of crystallise and decant what we're actually going to do. So there's three real main projects um, from a CITRIC perspective. Um, there's a clinical partnership project, a community healthcare company project, and a precision diagnostics lab. And so I'll, I'll explain each of them in turn. The clinical partnerships aspect of things is, is really key. Um, ultimately, in line with the O'Shaughnessy report that has just been released, we want to see an expansion of clinical trials, a significant expansion of clinical trials within our locale. And there are a whole multiplicity of, e of reasons for that, some of which have been mentioned in terms of giving access to patients um, and being able to income generate, 
uh, being able to expand as a service and ultimately to provide the highest quality medical health care for our community both here and beyond and be part of that and be part of leading that. So how do we actually go about do th doing that and why do we want to do that? Well, I mean, for example, we have probably three very recent examples that through the development of the School of Medicine and the partnerships between the Western Trust and Ulster University, we've managed to attract very, very high quality individuals to come and live and work here. Um, one of those is an expert in obesity, which we all know is a, is a major problem within our society that we need to tackle. Another is in terms of pulmonary fibrosis, and we have been able to attract again a very high quality individual uh, to come and work here in the Trust now and to lead regionally um, on pulmonary fibrosis, which is basically scarring of your heart. You may know people that have that problem. It's an exceptionally unpleasant disease and it has currently no treatments for it. But the actual a portfolio of work that has now come from the appointment of this new joint appointment means that we're now able to offer our patients things that they would otherwise not have. And that only comes through research participation. One of the other things that is really important to understand now, you see lots of uh, uh, media on motor neuron disease, for example, uh, particularly within rugby players like Rob Burrows and Dottie Weir. Uh, we, for years through Ulster University uh, in particular, have led on a program of research in motor neuron disease, which is led to um, the training of a new doctor who is likely to be a new neurologist within our service within the coming six months. And so that person will actually not only be a very research active individual, uh, but they will again be a leader on a regional level of the provision of treatment for uh, people with motor neuron disease. And so the, the tables are turning in the sense that we are now becoming regional leads, whereas traditionally we may have been not in that position where it would have been led from other parts of the province. In addition to that, we, we our partnership with the university is crucial again because of the fact that we really need to breed our own. And the School of Medicine strives to do this. There's a remarkable statistic that 80% of people that train in a school of medicine uh, work within 20 miles of where they were trained. And in actual fact, in Northern Ireland and Belfast, it was 90% of people worked within 10 miles of where they were trained. So the School of Medicine seeks to, uh, you know, change that trend, um, retain these people because we are uh, continue to struggle as a trust because of the demographic that we have in the city here and beyond, and also because of an aging population. So we, these are ways, the things that we talk about today are ways in which we tackle these problems. We, we need to breed people who are research active as well. It used to be that within Northern Ireland, we were world leading in various different areas, for example, within cardiology, in terms of the de development of the defibrillator, in terms of thrombolysis, which is clot busting medication, which we no longer use. Uh, but we, we really need to get back to that level of excellence. And the only, well, there's no reason why we can't lead from here. The community health care company then is, a, is the second very, very unique novel uh, endeavor that has never been done before. And basically what it is, is a cooperative uh, for community and research social enterprise as a, and it's a non-for-profit model that is akin to the uh, credit union type structure and in this sense what we would be doing is we would like the community to sort of lead forward with a non-for-profit cooperative that would um, uh, increase the level of participation in studies the sort of UK and Ireland wide uh, average recruitment sits at less than 5% of people. And a lot of the demographic of the people that are involved in that are not the people that come from the parts of this city who actually struggle with disease. They come from a more affluent uh, part of society. 
So we need to, this type of endeavour would seek to address um, the recruitment of patients from the people that I look after every day. So this, this is completely unique in the sense that we would actually like people to become members of a company called CoCare and to reward them as a non-financial dividend, we would give them a virtual currency that would allow them to, uh, uh, to uh, get discounts on, for example, energy. And how does that work? Well, you can use your virtual currencies in local businesses. Uh, they get their money back in terms of corporate or social responsibility tax relief. And so the, it means that they can provide discounts on energy costs, for example, or certain foods. Now, it's not going to be foods like at McDonald's. It's going to be fresh food. So that type of endeavour really has never been done before. Um, the widespread uh, feeling about it is that it's a fantastic idea. They will also be able to uh, gain additional virtual currency through participation in just simply walking around all of the parks like St. Columns, or, and which have already been geofenced around the city to allow people to accumulate their, their virtual currency. And if they don't want to use it themselves, they can donate it to youth clubs, etc., so that they can get discounts and services that they want to avail of. So the, 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 essentially, the, a member in co-care would become the user, the shareholder, and the beneficiary. And it's never been done before. It would be a transferable entity, and it would be led by our community with a steer from us as the three partners and others. The last part then of the project is really a precision diagnostic laboratory. So you've heard a lot, I'm sure, in the news about various different uh, types of use of genetic material and how useful it's become. So this here for me is the earliest win. There's lots of different projects that we've been involved in over the years where the captive audience within this region have demonstrated how interested they are in research and how willing they are to participate. What we seek to do primarily as, as the sort of phase one of all of this is to implement a uh, testing facility in the Northwest here, looking at what's called pharmacogenomics. So what is pharmacogenomics? Every one of us in this room have mutations within our genetic makeup that dictate our response to the medications that we take. Some of the medications that we take, we will not respond to. Some of us will respond to them in a very, uh, you know, uh, magnified way. So, for example, the use of pain relief, codeine-based uh, tablets, people will frequently say, oh, I can't take codeine because it makes me feel very, very sick and I'm allergic to it. But in actual fact, they probably can. They just need a dose adjustment and it's dictated by their genetic makeup. And it's very straightforward to do the test. You simply want to take a swab from the inside of your mouth, uh, just the saliva, and we can test for those mutations. And then we can match those mutations and dictate your prescription for the top 50 prescribed medications that we use in, in society. So th this means that we would be able to dramatically decrease the amount of adverse side effects that people get or adverse drug reactions, which can frequently lead to hospitalization and, and in some cases death. This has already been done within the cancer space. So we already know this. Anybody that has colon cancer nowadays as a standard of care will have the mutation uh, DYD15 or DP15 measure, uh, measured. That will dictate the chemotherapy and will dictate the dose of the chemotherapy that they receive. And you'll have seen two days ago a similar type of scenario for the treatment of lung cancer. So we really want to focus on three areas. Uh, one is in terms of cardiovascular disease, because it's, a me it's the leading killer of, of uh, our society. Um, the second is in terms of mental health. Uh, because we know that it's a major uh, trigger point and a point that's very close to the hearts of people in this region. And also because there's a lack of science in terms of the prescribing of antidepressant medications. It's really a trial and error type scenario 
which can take two to three years. And in that two to three year period, people can end up having taken their own life or having serious adverse effects from the medications that they have been prescribed. And finally, we wanted to look at pain management as well because of the fact that there is a real heterogeneity in the response of people to various different pain relief. And we can simply take a swab, measure the mutation, and identify what is the right medication for the right individual so that they benefit most. So those are the, two, those are the three sort of key areas that we want to focus on. The spending objectives, next slide, is really to deliver the research infrastructure because at the minute we don't have the infrastructure to actually deliver this, nor do we have all of the equipment that is required to deliver this effectively. Um, we also want to deliver in the sort of wider life and health science sector, which we know is one of the leading sectors economically in the world, and that will lead to uh, improvement and expansion of clinical and personalised medicine, which is a theme that's close to the heart of this region. Um, an increased level of industry engagement who are required because that's where our money will come from to try and make this a sustainable and viable uh, project. Uh, the development of new techniques and devices and improved health outcomes uh, once and for all. Uh, we want to support the growth in health uh, in the health and wider life and health se sectors within and beyond the Derry London Derry area and the Straban city region. I have to look after Straban because that's where my mother's from. And develop both financially and environmentally, uh, environmentally sustainable facilities. So next slide, the options really, and the only preferred option or preferred way forward that I'm going to discuss is really in terms of um, option eight, which is really the development of co-care, the clinical partnership project and the precision diagnostics or multi-omics facility. Um, next slide, we have touched upon, uh, and I, this is a very detailed slide. They say you should never say that because it's the only slide that you remember. But the benefits of this here are so wide, you know, and we've, we've touched upon them in terms of the direct health benefits from a higher standard of care, which should be our priority because someday all of us will require care. Um, we've said about the increased number of CTEMPs, which is just a, a, an acronym for medical or drug trials, and the social healthcare company integration within uh, the Western healthcare healthcare and in the wider university research aspirations. The risks, without taking you through them in detail, we feel that we can mitigate for all of the potential risks that we have outlined in the, the column on the right. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, the total expansion that we seek to uh, achieve is a, an additional 1,215 metres squared at a total cost of around 10.9 million uh, pounds. Uh, this will take several years to deliver. Um, it has always been an aspiration and a, 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 dream, a dream of our uh, of CTRIC to become mobile. There's many, many reasons for doing that. Um, we find that people are, find difficulty in, in simply coming from this part of the town to the hospital. So I, I would like us to become mobile and go to them and simply as well to go across the entire Western Trust uh, area uh, beyond the Dairy City Instrument District Council because our remit lies beyond that uh, council area. So to mitigate for the initial uh, income generation and so that we're not waiting for this build to be done, uh, we want to go mobile. Um, we will also, um, there's a lot of equipment costs within that, all of which really are to sort of drive forward the whole aspiration of the clinical implementation of pharmacogenomics in uh, our region and as a whole, where we lead from here. And finally, um, we, we can take any questions in terms of the income and expenditure. 
Um, but the preferred solution is the, the size of the building that I've mentioned, the capital cost that I've mentioned, and we would feel that by year 10, the net income would be just over 2.2 million pounds. In the, in the midst of all of this, um, we have had a lot, uh, next slide please, uh, we've had a lot of industry engagement, uh, both locally in Northern Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland, in the wider UK, Europe and globally. And so there's a list of various different uh, industries that we have been dealing with in developing this. So I'm happy when the time comes to take any questions, but that's uh, my presentation complete. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. And to you, Madam Mayor, if I can just pass over to Frank, make a few comments. Great. Um, just want to continue with the same presentation. And just go on to the next slide. So um, thanks very much, um, uh, everybody. For uh, I'm going to now take you through the the project number two, uh, which is um, with regards to the um, uh, uh, medical teaching that's provided in on the Avon Hospital. Um, so just go on to the next slide. So um, just to sort of take you through what the current structure is for the um, Ulster University's uh, graduate entry medicine program. So it's a it's a four year course. Um, the students are already attending um, the Western Trust. Um, so the four years they've all they're all given a um, um, a name. They're not they're not numbered. So we have first year where the teaching is all provided at the McGee campus um, and with some placements in general practice. And then after that, they uh, have placements in secondary care. So we have a uh, transition year. Um, we're placements mainly in general medicine and surgery, uh, as well as general practice again. And then they have uh, their penultimate year, and then finally their final year, where they have preparation for practice for when they start as uh, foundation year doctors. So um, in Ottawa at the moment, then we have um, we've already had one cohort complete their transition year. They've now started on their penultimate year, and we now have the second cohort going through transitional year. And then from, obviously then from September, or from all, end of August, we're gonna have that cohort, cohort and penultimate year move into final year. So the numbers in Alton Gavin are just continuing to grow uh, year on year as, as these UU students um, are going through each year. So the existing capacity we have for medical education, they met at West Building um, on the Alton Gavin side. It was um, established in 2014. Um, it was mainly at the time that it's been a long standing teaching hospital for Queens uh, and we continue to have um, between 80 to 100 medical students from from Queens attend the, 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 through the Alton site as well. So that capacity was designed with just Queens in mind, obviously, at that point, um, you know, the graduate energy program uh, hadn't been thought of. So the, the, the current existing capacity then can't really meet the need for the increase in number of, of students um, that are coming through um, as well. So, yeah, it's got, you know, great. We've got great facilities there to teach. We have things like simulation, uh, we've got good lecture theatre, tutorial space, but it just doesn't really meet uh, our current needs. Um, so it, it, the, the, whenever we're providing medical education, although we're, we're talking a lot about University of Ulster, uh, it's worth stating that, that we very much, whenever we teach them, it's very integrated in terms with the um, Queen students that are already there, as well as the physician associate uh, students that are also present on the Alec Alvin side. So for example, you know, although they're, their programs uh, and their um, uh, curriculum are different. You know, if you're teaching a Queen student or a UU student about chest pain, it's just going to be the same thing that you're teaching them. So we have a very, very integrated program um, to, to to teach them as well. So what are the wider benefits? Well, I suppose in particular, if we provide an excellent teaching experience for students, then you know I feel it's much more likely then that uh, once they graduate and become doctors, that they're more likely to stay. Uh, and work in the place that that they've received that that excellent experience in terms of education. They'll know when it comes to postgraduate education, they're going to get a similar really excellent experience as well. 
As well as that, I think if you provide excellent undergraduate education, clinicians um, that are interested in medical education, and these tend to be clinicians that are also interested in research, they're much more likely to, to, come, to want to come work for you as well. So uh, let's move on to the, the next slide. So um, the current position is that, that all the, the current Queen students and uh, UU students are, are going through the, the, um, the, the existing building for Meta West, which really just has, it doesn't have the capacity uh, to meet that. So we do have a, an interim solution that starts in September. Um, there's some additional space that's been identified. But that, that doesn't fully meet um, our need to provide for, for the increase in number of students. Um, the existing building is it's a modular building um, and it has uh, constraints in terms of expansion. So one side of it is a, is a laundry, the other side is, is a, a car park on the main road. So it, it, it you know, can't really be expanded itself. Um, and um, because it's it's probably a temporary structure as well, um, it probably doesn't have that long-term sustainability to, to use that building for expansion. Um, so we have to look at a, an alternative uh, site um, on on the Galvin site, so we can go on to 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 continue to um, pr provide that high-quality teaching and and, a, and an environment that's fit for purpose. Um, so we move on to to the next slide. So we needed to identify um, space for uh, the current cohort of UU students, which is 70 plus an additional 10% um, of students that that, um, um, that also attend that are, that are uh, foreign students. Um, so based on the current um, capacity uh, in terms of what it was built for, we projected a need for an additional nine teaching rooms, uh, of which two of those will be lecture theatres, uh, two will be clinical skills rooms, uh, three tutorial rooms, uh, another simulation room, uh, and a virtual reality room as well. As well as that, we need the support space that's required for that. For example, we need a reception, we need um, ICT capacity, we need um, uh, storage space, um, and things like that. And whenever we're trying to decide on a site, we have to try and think of somewhere that if there is um, the potential, that there is the potential um, ease of expansion if the number of medical students at some point in the future for either UU or for Queen's uh, increases. So we need to have somewhere that um, we we will be able to expand if needed. Um, so on to the next slide. So uh, of our options, uh, we went through 10 uh, options. Um, we were looking either at, at new build or refurbishments. We, we eventually came down uh, to three options, um, one of which um, was to do nothing. One was then to um, have something integrated uh, with um, the Personalized Medicine Center as well. Uh, but um, uh, at, at the end, what we've decided then is for a um, new build of 590 90 meters squared. Um, that uh, is going to be added to the um, the current multidisciplinary education centre or or trust headquarters in the Antony Alvin site. So we move on to the next slide. So that that's a photograph of, of roughly where where it's going to be. So if you know the the Antony Alvin site, um, so the MDEC or trust headquarters, um, it sort of sits uh, opposite where the the new North Wing is. Uh, there's some trees that are kind of in front of it and um, within that uh, site there already exists a medical library and uh, so the red area that's marked on it is is where where the preferred option is uh, for this new site and it's going to be attached on to the medical library um, it's uh, currently what's in that space is just some parking space um, so it's not going to take up much car parking space so we won't displace too much there um, it's likely to be a two-story build, and the, the site where it is means that, that, that if there is any potential future growth, it can be easily expanded. So the capital cost for this um, is going to be £4.6 uh, million, pounds, and then um, 114000 per year revenue uh, needed. And that, that comes from, because you know, these are existing students, that comes from the, the, the Sunday uh, that the Western Trust uh, receives. So the staff are already in place um, to, to, to teach these students. So we want to the next slide. So uh, this is just a, a slide, you know, just 
um, detailing some of the procurement strategies that, that that's going to look at in terms of uh, procuring the ICT, the construction and the equipment that that's um, that's going to be needed to 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 support this new site. And if I finally just move on to the next slide. And this then outlines the, the time frame um, that's that's going to be needed. And if we if we um, if we start as as soon as possible, we're, we're looking at at the the site being ready by um, towards um, February uh, twenty twenty seven. So uh, thanks. That is the end of my presentation. Um, again, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Frank, and again through you, Madam Mayor. And just to conclude the presentation, I'm going to ask Paul to make some final comments. Thank you very much, and thank you, Madam Mayor, for the invitation. <clears throat> I just want to give perhaps a bit more uh, context around the uh, School of Medicine. Of course, we have a, a number of aspirations in, in, in terms of what we're trying to do on the campus and it's very much a, a moving picture as you'll see also from just last Friday with the launch of the, the task group, um, what we've had with the return of the executive um, has, has given us quite a lot of disruption which is why um, Victor has uh, left with you today three outline options which uh, run from a, an affordability option through to one that's aspirational but probably the right one for, for, from Northern Ireland. Um, the big issue for us in offering maximum clarity in this space is that the size of the building to build really relies upon some knowledge on one, um, not just the future service needs which actually within the business case we've tried to ascertain ourselves using uh, best available techniques but also the um, appetite to fund uh, the future service needs of Northern Ireland, which is uh, very difficult to discern under current circumstances with a returned executive. We do feel that there's uh, an extra capital ask to be made of, of government, and that's the right thing to do at this stage. We think that it's pretty obvious that um, Northern Ireland is going to need more doctors, and there's a route to, to do it through here. It would seem to be a missed opportunity to be building a building on our campus and then to to underbuild it in terms of stage. So I've spent mm, quite quite a bit of the past year making that case within within government that, you know, tell us if you need to build a bigger building and we'll try to bigger, big, build a bigger building. As part of that process, I've indicated an intention that we would uh, put in additional um, monies of Ulster University, which we will do, but as construction inflation has has moved on, the additional monies that we would uh, put in are now actually required uh, for the affordable option. So the affordable option, which we absolutely can, and as a minimum will deliver, includes uh, the money that we would put in to build a bigger building. And therein lies a bit of a dilemma for us. Uh, I think that where we are in terms of um, creating the campus, especially um, in relation to the other city deals, is that we are in the business, I think, as um, Victor had pulled out, that there's a part of placemaking in here and we wish to build that building across the road and there is a, a dilemma. Do we wait for additional capital funds to be um, committed or do we do move ahead in with the building that is um, buildable within the monies that's, that's on the table? Both are persuasive but I think for me that the placemaking element and how it fits with the other city deals is is really important uh, and as a consequence uh, it has all sorts of uh, knock-on effects and then once you get to the point whereby uh, you, you feel that might be a settled view along comes our, our task group which we very much welcome uh, and perhaps there's an opportunity to proceed with additional capital. So uh, we've presented all, all options with, I suppose, a guarantee from me that LC University will, will fund a building. In terms of the size of the building, we invite Northern Ireland, as we have been doing, to uh, make some decisions in relation to the future service needs that they need for, for doctors, and we will seek to uh, accommodate in an expanding uh, envelope. All of that still still sees us, um, you know, committing additional funds over that that's available through um, the inclusive futures uh, funds and we continue to um, partner with others. One of the things that we have ensured remains um, 
in the project within the affordable option is that commitment to uh, the full research piece because the full research piece that I think um, continues with our um, valued partnership with the, the the trust and with with CTRIC which is really important I think to to multiply the value of the medical school across into uh, clinical research uh, and as such we we continue to in include that in in even the most affordable option which we will uh, bolster with the university's uh, own funds. So that's where we are. We think that given uh, the options we should work up fully, we have fully worked up the best for Northern Ireland offering, because if that is to be considered, it will need a full business case to justify that, that investment. Uh, the other one, the most affordable option, doesn't really need that level of justification, given that it, it's supporting a medical school of 70 plus students, which we've already recruited to, and we're in our third year. And in terms of a value for money, it's already being supported with a, uh, a bigger building from the university's own monies that wouldn't be achieved with the inclusive futures alone. So that's the way we've structured um, the options. So that just gives you a little bit of a, a summary as to, to why we've pitched what we have um, today. And um, with my colleagues and others, we'll be open to questions. Thank you. Thank you all uh, very much uh, for those presentations. Certainly very, very interesting. And I suppose for my personal option would be to go for the very, very best. And hopefully uh, that's what we will get. And um, I also want to welcome the task force too for McGee, um, uh, an excellent uh, announcement. And that will also help, help our case. So Christopher. Gormel Gutmer, and I suppose I'm going to start um, by, I, for, I don't know, it was remiss of me at the start not to declare an interest as an employee in the Western Health and Social Care Trust. Um, but this was a very fascinating presentation, um, and I want to welcome everybody um, to, to the Chamber today. Um, and I suppose congratulate everybody on the work that was. The, the, that when, the work that was involved in getting us to this stage, because um, as we've seen throughout the entirety of it, you can see the scope of it has it, been it, it's extensive to say the least. And with and the, everybody involved in this also has a day job, um, and this hasn't. So it's it's impressive that we've been able to get to the stage that we're on, um, and uh, and hats off to everybody that played a part in that. I think Victor started off the presentation by um, going back uh, and giving us a bit of a timeline and, and where we've come from. And, and, and one of the things that, that jumped out at me, and, and, and it does, it, it, it started off by stating that the need for a school of medicine is not in question. Um, and I don't think there's anybody in this chamber that would that would disagree with that statement. I would almost flip it in its head. And when you see the challenges that we're facing, um, not only in our economy, but the challenges that our health system is facing, um, the, the the consequences of not doing something like this are devastating. Uh, and this is the, this initiative, um, investment, the scheme that, that these are all working on, is something that is is so vital um in terms of 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 seeing our city grow as a university city they see our expansion um the, of the university but they see the sustainability of our health profession and and that's that's something that um that can't be overstated i think it's been well rehearsed in various forums and it's been well rehearsed today around the importance of people uh, are of being educated in a place where they're they're going to ultimately love uh, and bring up their family and, and carry on their professional life. And we know that there's a huge challenge in attracting professionals. Um, they, they come to this part of the world, um, they deliver services in this part of the world, and the School of Medicine is one way they address that challenge and, and, and overcome that. And it's a no-brainer um, for anybody looking and from the outside, it is, it's an absolute no-brainer. And it's and I would agree with, I would agree with yourself, Mayor, 
um, they, they overcome the huge challenges that we're all facing as a society. We need to be ambitious. We need to be looking at, at, at achieving the highest possible level that we can. And Paul, I, I know from this council's perspective, um, we would support yourselves in, in relation to how we, how we can achieve and deliver um, the, a facility that's not going to be outdated and outgrown um, to me as soon as we open the door. So we need something that's going to be future proofed. And I, I would hope that we as a council will do whatever we can to support yourselves in, in, in that. And I think in relation to it all, and CTRIC is a fantastic model um, in, in relation to that tri partnership um, approach to everything. And, the, this proposal is put in front of us, and, and I really would have liked the opportunity to have they read the more detail before going into this meeting because it, it was a, a lot of it was fascinating. But you would have liked they they read over that bit again and 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 do a better reading before beforehand. But um, but see, see like the the personal the, the personal medicine uh, approach. Uh, it, it is fascinating um, when you see the the potential uh, in in relation to that. They improve in patient care. They they make, having a more efficient um, health system, and they improve in the outcomes um, for people that are living in the city and district. Um, is the 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 potential there is limitless, and this. Proposal that's been put in front of, or that that we've been discussing today, and um, is a way to build on the fantastic work that's already ongoing at, at Citric. So, I think this is a very exciting time. It's it's a very exciting time coming on the back, as Paul, as as you have outlined, that um, there's that with the announcement on Friday around a, a, a task force set up. They look at delivering. Um, for the university expansion that we all want and desperately need. Um, so now's the time. You know, we've we, we can look back for for um, for decades around how this part of the world has been neglected. I think the approach um, that that the team has taken today around how we can look forward, how we can make this part of the world a central cent center of excellence. Um, how we can make Derry City and Straban world leaders on, in terms of research and development. Um, it's it's really, really exciting. And from our perspective, we fully endorse the, the direction of travel that's been presented today. And it's and look forward to, to learning more and working with these uh, to finally deliver on what we so desperately need. They see delivered um, in, in not only in our health system, within our university, and and in collaboration with council. It's it's an exciting time, and be working together, we can deliver so much more. So, um, thanks, Mayor, and thanks everybody for the presentations. There's no real questions. It's just, um, but fully fully endorse um, the direction of travel that's been presented. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, uh, thank you, Christopher, and I take that endorsement as a proposal. You're proposing. Yes, a report. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, and on behalf of the SDLP group, to welcome and thank everybody um, who has been involved in this process this far um, for, for all of the work and for the very interesting um, and exciting presentations um, that we have just heard. Um, and, Mayor, I would also agree with yourself and Councillor Jackson um, when we are suggesting that we aim high. Um, I remember when City Deals was first talked about um, across the north when government ministers told us that cities in Northern Ireland were too wee for a city deal. Um, and this city and district um, aimed high there and look at the conversation that we're having now. Um, is something that, that I think we should keep at the forefront of our mind when we're looking at this. Um, and I would be happy to second councillor jackson's proposal on behalf of the sdlp uh, i think this um, and what we have heard today um, is definitely very very interesting um, and i think the sooner that we can get news out to the wider public um, the better 
um, because I think people seem to think that city deals is this notion that we all have here and it will have no benefit um, to the wider community and it's projects like this um, that the wider community will see um, benefit from. For example, when you look at the community health care model, um, which will hopefully be, be rolled out, um, the opportunities there um, are fantastic. Um, when we were talking earlier um, in, in relation to this, we need to see something that our city can do and to change our own fortunes. And if we're being really, really honest with the greatest will in the world and with all of the hard work that's going on, we aren't offering people, young people, enough opportunities to stay in the city and study. That's the reality. There are far, far too many of them um, who look away midway through upper sixth year to see where they're going to go to university as opposed to looking in first of all and i think we need to change that mindset and again it's projects like this and with further expansion that will hopefully do that we're also not providing enough opportunities for people from outside to look here to come and again it's things like this i think that will do that and i i, I actually wrote down the statistic i think it was uh, around at the end 80 percent of people who study end up living and working 25 miles um, where they've, they've learned to study. That's a ph phenomenal um, statistic. If we could even get half of that, that would be massive growth um, within the city and district, but I think it's something that we should be aiming for. But it all comes from better courses, better opportunities, um, and, and more um, opportunities for people um, from outside, but also um, some of our own people as well. Um, when we were going through the benefits of this, there was 2.2 million per year at year 10, um, as a figure was um, put around. Um, I would just like to know, wh where does that go? Or is that reinvested or, or, or what happens with that? Or how often um, do we see that type of benefit um, coming? And the last question that I have, Madam Mayor, is for Paul. Um, who suggested that extra capital ask from central government was would, would be required to go with, I presume, option four, which, if I have, if I have my options right, is 10,300 square metres of a building. Um, so we need extra capital ask from central government. How much extra do we need? Um, I think it's something that we, we need to know, and I appreciate that you might not um, have that to hand, but... Um, I think it's something um, that, that we would need to focus on. Um, I think this is, those are two questions. I also agree around the placemaking aspect of all of this because it can't just be in isolation. City deals should not and could not, sh should not and could not be done in isolation. Um, and I think if you look at the suite of project that this council and, and, and partners are, are, are promoting, it's not being done in isolation. So we have to take into consideration the placemaking aspect of all of this, um, which then I think feeds back on the option four. Um, and I think where option four is where we should be looking at, um, because for as long as I can remember, we've been talking about expansion, expansion, expansion. If we curtail ourselves now with possibly option two, that doesn't allow for further expansion. As I understood from the slides, um, at that particular site, and I don't see why anybody would be suggesting, um, and I know it's not the preferred option, I accept that, but I don't see why we would be suggesting option two um, if that scuppers further expansion, um, if the funding was to become available, and I know um, there, there, there's funding constraints around all of this. Um, those are some questions I have, Mayor, but on, on behalf of the SDLP, we fully endorse the plans we would prefer um, option four um, because it's ambitious. Um, and I think throughout the entire city deal pro process, this city and district has been ambitious, and I don't think that that should stop now. Um, and I, again, want to thank everybody who has um, worked on this to get this to this stage um, for all of the hard work that they have put on. Um, and I certainly look forward to um, seeing this develop um, and, and receiving more updates um, as this progresses on. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, before I bring it back uh, for the answers to the questions there. Just going to open it up to the floor. Is there any right, uh, Councillor Hart? Thanks, Mayor. Um, 
As a proud Straban man, I'm glad to see that you got a lot of your inspiration from a Straban woman. <laughs> uh, I have a few questions here. Um, you, you talked about the different options and, and option uh, four. You, uh, currently, you have uh, 80, 80 students and take. So I was just wondering what uplift uh, in student numbers would be for option four and what is the deficit? Um, you talked about the deficit. How, what is, what's the cost involved? Um, uh, what are the projected numbers of jobs, uh, you know, from, from an academic side associated with the, the capital investment? Um, what courses uh, are envisaged and, and timeframes? Um, and you, you did mention about strict timeframes with delivery. Um, I think it was stated 2027. What are, you, what are the university uh, dates involved with that? Thank you. Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you very much, Mayor, for allowing me in. And I do thank uh, all the speakers for the time and the effort that they put in and for attending today. And uh, it's uh, it's good to see how uh, your enthusiasm for the project. And uh, I do agree, as, as has been mentioned by previous speakers there and the proposal put forward there, uh, it's good to be ambitious and to go for option four would be the preferred one there. So uh, again, there's a massive amount of effort again as, as uh, Councillor Jackson stated, uh, you know, it would be handy, maybe maybe you can, maybe you can't, those slides again, just to get a wee better read at them, because as you admit yourselves, it wasn't the handiest looking at them on the things, just to get a wee bit more detail and a wee bit more feel for it again, for I know you have, have explained yourselves, but again, it's just to refresh ourselves if we get a chance to read through them, if that's possible, if it's not, it's no harm done, but um, no, uh, welcome the project, welcome the work that's been done, it's good to see that. Uh, what of a slight, uh, just a, more a little jab than anything else there. In regards to that there, you did use that statistic about the 25, uh, you know, 80% working within 25 uh, miles away. In regards to that, I don't think there's a hospital within the 25 mile radius. So it would have to kind of be Alton and Galvin. Um, I know that my closest one is, is Enniskillen, but again, that's a difficulty as well in Enniskillen, as well as the retention of doctors and getting them to stay there. I mean, and the same in Alton Galvin, it's, it's keeping those doctors there when you do have even the new build that's there and a good facility it is, but it's time to keep staff there. And again, if you do have a, have that training facility in, the, in, in, in this part here, at least hopefully it'll, uh, it'll benefit the whole of uh, Northern Ireland and into uh, Donegal and that. So as again, in regards, that's, that's Grant. One slight wee question, again, it's related then to the question that's been asked here, by Councillor Hart, um, and it's, it's just an ask, but it's, it's in regards to your uplift in numbers there. And again, uh, just sort of accommodation wise, is that anything that's factored into your end of things or is that just something leaving it more to the private sector? You know, if you are getting more so if you're getting students from here in theory, some maybe could travel, commute to it, or but if you're trying to attract more maybe international students then as have you the accommodation for that, or is that an, an additional thing that has to be incorporated in it? But uh, again, it's a minor thing. Content with what you have brought forward today. Very, very interesting. It's good to see it, and hopefully it does get the support. Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay, um just gonna bring it back now. And no Neil's gonna start off uh with the uh, uh, question, yeah. questions, yeah. Councillor Tierney's question in relation to the 2.2 million. Uh, uh, you'd be pleased to hear that this first question we were asked at the board meeting of Citric when we were approving the business case by uh, the, the council representative. Uh, and I suppose there's two aspects to that. The first I would remind you is that Citric is a partnership between the trust, the council, and the university. So any monies generated will be owned by all three organizations. But whenever we said that, Professor Peace was very quick to come in to remind us all that we, it's vitally important that we keep the Citric development leading edge and all the equipment is extremely expensive to renew and we need to make sure it's self-generating. In five or 10 years time, we don't know what equipment will be needed. Certainly the replacement equipment will be due and it's all vitally important we self-fund that, that change so that it doesn't become a drain on the resources of either the council, the, 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 the university or, or the trust. So uh, we, we will be reinvesting it, I suppose, was your ultimate question. You're absolutely right, Councillor Cheney, so thank you for that. Accommodation, maybe? Is that the next question? Yourself, Paul? Kind of make, made, made notes on all the questions that I can answer came on. Do you want me to go through those? Thank you very much. I think in terms of the amount to be to be transparent by our calculations, and of course these are 
paper exercises pre any any procurement but it's in the order of about um, 40 million in terms of difference between the the most the, the currently affordable option and the aspirational uh, option it probably gives you a student uplift at the moment you know we're looking at the accommodation at around um, 80 80 students on a proportional basis it would uh, the the intermediate option would be around uh, 150 perhaps a little bit more and the other one would probably be around uh, two, two, 200 plus on a on a floor based basis it works out to 180 students but i know that the, the business plan has been beyond uh, 200 as we get some efficiencies of scale in relation to that just to clarify in terms of the growth we're really broadly saying that's about growing the school of uh, medicine and in terms of the contribution to overall student numbers on our campus in uh, Derry, London Derry, then it's not an enormous uh, contribution. You know, we're talking about going from 80 students a year to as a, as a maximum, you know, 200 plus students a year. So there's only a number of hundreds. It's not the thousands that people are looking for in the uplift to 10,000. And in terms of uh, a spend to get student numbers, you wouldn't really uh, choose to spend your uh, monies on medical school accommodation just to get student numbers. Uh, medical school accommodation prices out at about uh, uh, 1.5 times. So it's about 9,000 pounds per square meter. I think it's most to 6,000 pounds per square meter. I'm talking off the top of my head there. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but in my head, it's at that that that, that 1.55 uh, times, but that's, that's the sort of thing uh, that we're they're looking at in, in in terms of that that uplift. So, in many ways, we're not putting this out there as the best option for Northern Ireland just to give the campus here more students. It's much the business case is is built on what the ser future service needs for doctors in Northern Ireland are. It's a collateral benefit in many ways that we get more more students uh, on our campus. There is a, an offer that if we if if we are to move forwards, that people can decide that capital allocations can can be made onto that that campus, and then the recurrent allocations, i.e., the the commissioning of us teaching that number of medical medical students, don't follow on. Then of course we'll have additional uh, accommodation that we can um, convert for for some other discipline. And indeed, the conversion and fit out of the spaces would probably come at a later stage while those decisions are be, being made and we'd be able to put other, other students in there. Indeed, that's the logic that I've used with people. Let's build a bigger building. And if we can't fill it with medical students because commissions don't in due course come, we'll find some other students because we're planning to expand to put it into that case. But just to come back where I said it's a more expensive build in, in medical school footage, I am, I am committed and passionate of uh, growing this campus. Um, we'd be putting in about £50 million of our own money broadly onto the campus. Our City Deals contribution with the additional money that I'm putting into the medical school building, whatever, um, I, I, I guess on the minimum offer, uh, we, we, would, we, would, we would hope that would become um, back to us if capital money is flowed, because all of the money that we have will be going onto that campus. And if not spent on this building, will be spent on another building at the campus that, that, that probably would be a bit more efficient in terms of its space use, because it has a different use, not just for medical school, medical students with its problem-based learning, which is quite um, space, space intensive. I think there was a question that was asked about the number of uh, posts, and we, we've just checked as, as we were here, and it's, it's 10 additional posts for that option uh, four with that sort of growth. Uh, most courses within the university would be around about a 20 to 1 uh, student to staff ratio with quite a lot of variance um, with business schools having, um, you know, 30, 40 sometimes and uh, other other programs having less than that. Medical would be would be less than that. So we're looking at about 10 additional uh, staff at uh, those those numbers of students. In terms of student accommodation, well, that's an issue for all of our courses, not just the medical uh, school. And again, with the fairly modest numbers of medical students that we're uh, talking talking about, there isn't a, a, a significant pressure that arises just from medical students. But of course, our aspiration to build the population at this campus more generally gives us um, an, an acute and future need for additional bed spaces in, in, in student accommodation. And that's an ongoing um, conversation that we're having with with developers because we certainly need more student accommodation the sorts of numbers that, that i've said to to developers is a thousand additional um, bed spaces in in the first instance and we'll, we'll we'll go we'll go from there i think that's answered all the questions that i've noted thank you 
go ahead and then councillor Antley. Uh, just a thank you for, for, for the answers and the replies there. We just wanted to come in one further question. Um, the, I think Aaron spoke about income generation for Citrix. Was it 114,000 per annum? Uh, income generation? Uh, is that through, through teaching? And um, I just was wondering what the university's uh, income generation figures are. The, the income generated is largely down to, you know, the participation of of patients within studies. So our average income per participant would work out at about seven and a half thousand pounds per patient. So there's a there's a round there's a range, for example, of maybe two thousand pounds per individual that takes part in a clinical trial, up to at the minute we have a breast cancer study uh, where one participant brings in one hundred and thirty eight thousand pounds. So the the income generation model is based upon the expansion of the numbers of participants that we have, and uh, that that that's where we where, where we largely draw our income from. There, there's other income uh, that is drawn from other types of participation. So, for example, there is an aspiration within uh, a body that's been set up in England called our Future Health. And they want to um, do genetic sequencing in 5.1 million people. And in Northern Ireland, they would like to tap into about 167,000 uh, citizens within uh, Northern Ireland. And so um, we have previously done work like this along with Genomics Medicine Ireland that became Genuity Science. and. Uh, but we were le we were left with no legacy in a sense, except for the employment benefits that came from it, because it generated quite a few uh, new jobs, and in fact led to the apprenticeship model that we've been building now, along with Northwest Regional College, which is for a, a role called study support officer. So the these um, the the difference now between what we learned before and in our interaction with Genuity Science is that our future health have agreed in principle that we would um, we would then retain some of the biological, all of the biological samples or an extra biological sample from all of the participants. And so that, that those extra biological samples uh, become, uh, there, there's lots of people, for example, around the world that want to access those samples because what industry essentially want is access to your healthcare information and the, the accompanying biological sample. So what we do in a co-care model is build the alliances and then the, the sponsors, the pharmas, they pay to get access to it. And that money goes back in and is reinvested, as Neil says, into future uh, um, capable equipment because the equipment changes so quickly and also the it also goes into further employment so i hope that helps to answer your question yeah thanks uh, it was from the university perspective that i was wondering um you know through teaching and research industry engagement you know what would your figures be uh, sure. uh, thanks I, I, I'll, I'll have to caveat it to say that I, i'm not particularly disappointed when i say that you know there will be income in terms of, of, of fees and, and research grant, but in terms of what that will, if you like, make for, for the university, um, zero, really. Um, indeed, in the additional, in, in the original projections, the, the um, medical school wouldn't, wouldn't break even until 2034, but that's not what we're in it for. And indeed, there's additional value that accrues to the economy and society more generally of, of um, quite a lot, actually, under option two over a 30 year period. It's about 116 million of net benefit to the economy and to society and under option four, it's about 193.5. But it's, it's very important that I say that's not money that ends up with Ulster University, quite the opposite. The Ulster University is running this programme for for Northern Ireland, it wouldn't be something that would would generate a great deal of margin for us. In, in, indeed, I would anticipate uh, quite quite the opposite until we hit a break even point. But that's not what universities do. We do things in the in the balance and in and in the round. We we have to be uh, squared off to ensure that we're we're sustainable. 
um, but but that's something that we've committed to do in this space. There's some variance in that. If if, if the having of the of the medical school is a, is a, is a catalyst to to bringing in uh, more students and more international students, that that would bring additional income that we ne haven't necessarily factored into to the direct benefits from the med medical school uh, for ourselves. And and indeed, as we go go forward, the attraction of research funds that would come into the university, some of which carries some uh, overhead offset. Uh, would end up on our on our bottom line, but but for us it, it it isn't an income generation piece; it's a service provision piece. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dantley. Graham Algot, Chair, and I'd like to, to thank uh, thank everyone here for their their contribution here today. Uh, it would have been as Councillor uh, has been mentioned before that if we had a had the slides beforehand, it would have been, you know, give us, or even if it's possible now after this meeting that we could get them slides, because there's a lot of very interesting stuff in it and plans, uh, like, you know, the, the virtual currency and, 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 and all of that and the, the benefits to the economy and society. I think it's in this part of the world, it's probably long overdue. We've had many false dawns uh, in, in, in the past. There is issues with the what would be perceived as the slow uh, progress of uh, regards Ulster University and 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 its commitment or its the increased students in in this area. There's difference between maybe aspirations and and reality and and then there's issues with the health service in 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 general and you know. It, it, the public and access and how it's being run and 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 where it's all going and we do live also we do live in an island that's very very small and they have two health services and two you know how education systems and that but you know it is uh it is to be welcomed and uh i think we need to take it in 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 the bigger picture because as been mentioned by alderman kerrigan you know the staff that we that could be being trained here, you know, the last thing we'll, that we want is for them to go. Well, I'm going to Scotland because it's better pay there. I'm going to England. Or I'm going to Saudi Arabia or or whatever. And it would be a shame that that if we get to that stage and and because of whatever the bigger picture and the health service and pay and all of that too, then a lot of them benefits uh, could be lost, and you know because. I take all, and I've heard them statistics about people who go to university in a in a certain area or who be educated in a certain area, and that the high number of statistics that that they maybe set up home there or or go to work there. This council, uh, and that's something that that needs to be, you know, it would be be nice. But this council done a, a had a a course or a, a had a thing with young people recently, and. When they asked them, how do they see? You know, do they see themselves leaving the district? Uh, and eighty-five percent of them says that they see themselves leaving. You know, once they 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 they're educated, not. So I think you know all of that needs to be to be looked at too. I don't have a comment, and I, I would like to see if we could get the slides. And I would like to thank you all for for your commitment. And I know you're very busy in that, but thank you. Thank you. And that's a few you have requested the slide. So if that was possible, thank you. Um, there's go ahead, Councillor Boyce. Thanks, Mayor. Just come on at the last minute. Apologies. Um, just really one question for uh, whoever thinks it appropriate. Look, first off, thanks for the presentations. Significant amount of detail contained in them and a and lengthy presentation as well. It was almost death by PowerPoint. I was glad we had doctors in the room to save me. If, if that could have happened. Cheers for that, Aaron. Um, no, it's really just, again, it's, it's, it's about quantum, but it's really more about uh, digging down into the detail, because obviously Councillor Tierney has asked, and, and you've given a fairly forthright answer to that in terms of the difference between what we have and what we haven't got and what we want to do. Um, but, and it is one for yourself, Professor, I suppose, really. Um, which government departments or combination of government departments or perhaps even governments might you envisage uh, might be able to or, 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 or would be responsible for, for increasing contributions to deliver 
um, uh, option four. I agree with everybody else. Option four is quite clearly the one that we all want to see developed. Um, but we're, we're, we're working in, in realms of reality as well. And, and, and we know the answers that often come back to us. And usually the answer is we don't have any more money. So I think that's an important thing for us to identify, even just at this stage, so that we've got some knowledge of how it is that we want to move it forward and push it forward uh, as uh, political representatives, I suppose. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, look, another alderman has just come on here, so I'll take that just before we go back, if that's okay. Yep, alderman, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, and it's just basically thank you all coming on to do the presentation as well. I uh, found it very interesting, especially the new forms of healthcare and so on, the course it was talked about. Um, probably we'll, we'll get a look at the slides later on as well, but I would just like to ask, ask the question, and we've talked about the 80% that do stay here. The current makeup of our medical school uh, in Mickey, where do the students all come from? How many are from Northern Ireland and how many are from outside Northern Ireland? Thanks, Mayor. Okay, Paul, do you want to take that now? Oh, sorry. Um, apologies, and I'm going to just come on last. And I'm just coming on because I think a female voice would be good as well. We've heard from a we've heard from a lot of men today in the room, so sometimes it's good to just get a female perspective. But look, I don't have any questions. I just want to congratulate everybody on the work that has taken place so far. It hasn't been an easy task to get to this point, um, but it is hugely impressive it's huge hugely exciting to get these plans and to particularly get the details around them um in terms of the medical school it was always fantastic to get that over the line and to get it into its temporary accommodation and you now see how that is going to develop and grow and absolutely we have a huge responsibility we don't want to stand still we want to have ambition and we want to grow so option four is the only option really that we should be endorsing here today and and do whatever we can to ensure that that capital money is there so that we can deliver it as you say paul the arguments are already made in terms of the need for gps the need for doctors and particularly for the need for them to be here in the northwest we have seen and we have heard on the news and presentations here within this chamber and difficulties in getting doctors for out of hours, particularly in Strabann. So I know that we definitely, we have an issue, the arguments are made. So all we need now is to ensure that we make the arguments for the Fountain to follow that. And for Belfast, we know has overheated in terms of student placements. So the opportunities are here in this city to grow. So we have to, we have to make them. Um, in terms of the other presentations, Aaron, and I'm going to give you a special gold star because yours was the most impressive because the detail, the details around it, I, I, I was furiously writing notes because the, you just hit all the right notes for me in terms of um, community centered approaches, um, how we, we need to work very locally, but be globally um, accessible and want to be global leaders in terms of what we do and have the centre here as a centre of excellence. Of course we do. We have absolutely fantastic people here. I have heard before around um, opportunities not being here locally for people who have been involved in the sciences. But from listening to you in terms of the opportunities for biologists, um, pharmacists, GPs, doctors, all to be involved. I, I was in Seagate last week and hearing of the opportunities there in terms of physics and chemistry. I think that we have huge opportunities here and it's right that we start telling people about them because I think sometimes we're a wee bit too we hide, we hide our light underneath the bushel, as they say in the Bible. But I have to say, I think that the presentation here today was absolutely tremendous in terms of showing what we have, what we can do, and go out now and tell people, you know, Derry and Strabane is open for business, and we're, and we're here, and the opportunities are huge. And I think in terms of the differences that we can make with clinical trials, personalised medicine, um, Absolutely, the benefits for our local community are huge. So thank you for the details. And again, I would I would like to see um, the presentations as well, just to make sure that I have the right notes taken and I'm over some of the detail because the detail and the presentations today were fantastic. So thank you all again, and just to endorse what has already been agreed. 
Okay, before I bring Paul on again, the final call for any comments or questions. No, over to yourself, Paul. Thank you. I'll try and ask, answer all those questions in the sequence that I receive them. In terms of the government departments, our sponsor department is Department for, for Economy. Of course, it's slightly complicated with the uh, health com commissions, which comes from Department of Health. But broadly, we've been brokering through, especially on the on the capital side, uh, with Department for for the Economy. So there is a a decision to make. It's a two two phase decision. One, do we want to build a bigger building? And I think that's a decision that will reside with um, Department for the Economy. Whether there's a contribution that comes from Department of Health for a bigger building really depends on their um, intent to be able to commission more medical students. If they wish to, com to commission more medical students, then uh, they may be in a, in, a, in a position to do so. Now, um, that's a matter for them, and I won't, I won't second guess that in, in, any, in, in any regard. There, there was another question about how many from uh, Northern Ireland. Well, we have a common common travel area, and so so we are recruiting uh, local students, but from either side of, of of the border. Outside of that, we take a few from um, Great Britain, but uh, not that many. Between five to ten percent, depending on the individual year. But broadly, we try to take as broadly as possible. That's from the 70 that we would count as being domestic. Then we get another 10% of international students that, 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 that we can take. And depending on the number of applications uh, so far, we've had around sort of five to five or so uh, in each uh, year in, in relation to that. So the vast majority are, are local students who we hope uh, will then um, stay. And just as a comment um, in, in relation to option four, the only one to in, endorse. I suppose I should stress that is the right option for, for Northern Ireland. But there is a, a, a question that, that may end up back in this council chamber or will certainly end up on my desk about do you wait until money's in place or do you move forwards with a plan to build a building for placemaking purposes and, and, and go, go for that? At, at, at some point, we will run out of track to be able to move and stay in sync with all of the other city deal initiatives that are building that, that campus. And that's why... You know, I've been a little bit disruptive with my colleagues in, in, in insisting that we highlight that as an, as an affordability bid, because that's the one that we're confident that without any decisions being forthcoming from, from government, we could proceed with. And on a placemaking, let's, let's get on with it, build the campus, get in with the, with the city deals. It's, it's very attractive, but I understand it, it, it's, not, it's not the ideal option. Um, and that's, that's where we are today, really, with wanting to present those multiple options, because it is a real dilemma. I wanted people here to know that I was committed to build a building. And for my purposes, I think that if, if no more money's forthcoming, well, then let's just build the building we can build. And we can build a new building for the medical school, and perhaps we should. But I don't want to waste the opportunity for Northern Ireland in if we can meet the, the future service needs. But But like the narrative that you heard on Friday around the task group. It's not something we can do all on our own. We're already putting pretty much all of all of the surplus monies that we have uh, into these um, campus rebalancing um, projects uh, that include city deals, but other projects on our campus too. Uh, and, and as a consequence, uh, we, we, we will put um, those, those contributions in, um, but we anticipate if, if there's a serious need and i believe there is on the basis of the task group to to, to growth uh, to ten thousand uh, students then uh, other other capital monies uh, are likely to be asked for and and if the pattern of those capital monies is well let's first invest into this medical school building then i'm back with victor and colleagues here um to be able to to say here's one we made earlier in terms of option four which is why it's the one that we've that we've built up fully because it enables us to mo move most quickly on the most important option Okay, uh, thank you, Paul. And I did indicate that that was going to be the last, but Councillor Tierney, I will let you have the last word. Thank you very much, Mayor. And it's just on the back of what uh, Professor Bartholomew has answered, which is the, the reason for it. So uh, in my first r round, um, I asked how much 40 million was uh, around the figure. So how long do we have before we have to call it? because we don't want to hold things up either. We want to be ambitious, but we equally don't want to hold things up. Or is it a possibility for option two with the 
option of expansion when the 40 million was to become available? Yeah, that's a $64,000 question. I should say $40 million question, forty million pound question. There's two, there's two elements to that, and there's a number of ways to address it. Um, intellectually, one might think, well, let's just design a couple of, couple of options while, while we go and seek you know, what we can do with the planners to find out what, what, what our options are and move on. Of course, there is the matter of um, professional, professional fees and the, and the writing up of plans. I know within the higher cost option, professional fees ran to about nine million pounds. So it's not insignificant to, to fully work up architectural plans and, and so forth uh, to do that. We will try to get, get ourselves just as much time as we can. There are things that we can, we can do from site acquisition to uh, pre-work on, on, on the site and then move to outline design and so forth. And we will try to ride both horses as it, as it looks useful. Um, I, I think it's measured in months rather than years, but I think it is measured in months rather than weeks. But that really depends on the conversations. You saw the time frame. I think, that Stephen Kelly was talking about the chair of the task uh, force on Friday, where he's have, looking to have a report out by nine months in, in many ways. I, I, I think that plays really well into this um, a, a agenda because it's, it's not an enormous time frame around such things as big capital projects here. And so I would expect that some of these these questions can be can be serviced and serviced and addressed, surfaced and addressed before that time. Uh, and so actually, I think the timing of the launch of the task force last Friday probably couldn't have been better for where we are in, in relation to this, this, this meeting. So I don't have a hard and fast answer, but that's kind of the ballpark I'm in. Thank you all very much, uh, folks, for giving up your very valuable time for coming here today. I know you're all very busy people, but continue on with all the, the hard work. And thank you. Thank you.